You wrote a column in the Financial Times expressing some, if I can put it, skepticism about whether all of this uh, generative AI may help us be better stock pickers. How do you see it? Well, I mean, uh, AI is going to be incredibly useful in a lot of areas because it can process such enormous amounts of information. And that's really what uh, you know, what selecting securities is all about, is, uh, you know, trying to figure out how much undiscounted information is out there. So uh, at, at first blush, it looks like it could be incredibly useful. Although, uh, regardless of how uh, elaborate and extensive your AI is, it's not as, ex as, as elaborate and as extensive as the market. You think of the stock market as just being, we think of it as just being Hey, this enormous information processing machine <laughs> uh, that uh, everyone in the world is out there trying to buy and sell securities. And it's their action um, that causes prices to be settled at, uh, at, at, reasonable, uh, at reasonable levels. So we think um, uh, even though AI apps will have a lot of information, they don't have as much information as it's embedded in the market. So for my taste, I'm accepting market prices. Uh, now, AI might be useful in, uh, in execution in a, in a variety of ways it can be useful. But in terms of if you say, how can I use AI to, to uh, pick a stock? Well, it's uh, the same old story. I know if you know things other people don't know, it can move quicker and more efficiently than they can. You can make money. But uh, I don't see any. It'll be years before we can figure out whether AI is really useful or not you know, in picking securities. And the beauty is, you don't have to do any of that in order to have a good experience. You know, you can, because you can go out there and buy the market and accept, you know, the, the prices of being set fairly. And, uh, and the market, the, the evidence is over long periods of time, the market does an amazingly good job at, at setting prices. Uh, so, so, David, right now, obviously, we're in the infancy of whatever AI uh, ends up being. And part of the issue is, as I understand it, the data. And do you have current up-to-speed data? A lot of this stuff is delayed, in fact. If we could get to a world where actually it did have as much data as the market has, could AI add a little something extra on that in terms of really t detecting long-term trends and short-term trends, looking at what happened in the past? Could it be a little bit better, a little bit ahead of the market? Well, there's always that possibility, but that's that's the history of money management, right? I mean, if you <laughs> are a little smarter than the market, you can make money. Uh, you know, the uh, but there's not much evidence that uh, people can outsmart the market. So, so David, you had a remarkable track record uh, managing money, investing money over the 50 years, as you say. Are you uh, using AI or machine learning at all? Are you experimenting with it in your own company? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there are any number of ways AI can be can be useful, particularly all the back office functions and market me dealing with market mechanisms and, uh, and trading uh, so forth. But at the end of the day, um, and we have algorithms we use as well, at the end of the day, though, we think it's important to overlay some hum human judgment on top of what a, whatever al algorithm you're using. <laughs> um, you know, to, uh, there's almost everybody that's experimented with AI has uh, comes up with, with the conclusion there. Many times, it, it gives you really screwy results. So, David, this, as I say, we're in the early, early stage of AI. We don't really know what it is or how far it's taking us. But we have some people saying this could be as important as electricity or the invention of the wheel. Do you have a sense where this could actually be a paradigm shift overall for the economy? Yeah, well, uh, for the overall economy, I, it, yeah, I think it... Uh, it should make uh, the economy more efficient, and uh, and, I, and I think it'll create progress. The uh, it's just the history of progress is um, that involves change, and anytime you have change, you have winners and losers. So it's uh, going to be a balancing act of you know the who wins and who loses in in uh, uh, with AI, but on balance, uh, it'll be a winner. Well, and David, when you say efficiency, what I hear is productivity. Yes. We, we have been lagging somewhat in productivity growth, certainly in the United States of America, maybe globally. Uh, do you right. have some hopes this might actually reinvigorate productivity growth? Could you help the economy overall? Absolutely. You know, at the end of the day, and this is where we kind of differ from, from AI, and that um, um, what really makes the market move and the economy move over time 
is human ingenuity. Um, you know, people out there trying to make their lives better and their companies better, and in doing that it makes it better for everybody else. You know, that's, uh, I think back at, you know, like in March of 2020 when there was a lot of fear in the pandemic, you know, where's the economy going? And we didn't try to predict anything then, but the, we still had the faith that people, when they have something bad happen to them, they don't just sit there and take it. They figure out how to get back on track. And that's what's driving everything. And to the extent AI can be useful in helping people get back on track or help them improve whatever it is they're doing, it makes, makes it life better for the rest of us.